So if you guys didn't see our last video, well, we did a video recently, I don't know when it went live, timelines, whatever. We did a video about the Corsair One i160, the 9900K small form factor that's water cooled with a 2080 Ti that's also water cooled and all crammed into this itty bitty little package. And I said in that video, we weren't gonna do a teardown or anything. I talked about maybe mentioning, or I talked about maybe changing the fan on the top because I thought temps could improve even though they were good. And a lot of you guys were like, Lazy J, he didn't, he didn't tear it down, you should have done a tear down. Even though I said we looked at what the insides looked like at CES. Here's what we're gonna do. Today I'm gonna go ahead and tear it down. I'm gonna show you how to upgrade things like the RAM, the hard drive, which I mentioned, I'll probably change with an SSD. And we're gonna change out the fan on top to see whether or not changing that out to something with a little higher RPM and more static pressure will uh, improve temperatures in this. And we're gonna overclock it. Things I usually wouldn't recommend on a small form factor PC. If she breaks, she breaks. EVGA offers a full range of components, including video cards, motherboards, power supplies, cases, and peripherals. Regardless of your needs, EVGA is sure to have you covered. To see what EVGA can do for your next build, head to EVGA.com. So the fan I'm gonna be using on here is one of our uh, 140 millimeter maglev fans from Corsair. It's kind of beat up on the edges. It, it was the ones we painted for Skunk Works and ended up not using. If you haven't seen our review video of what the performance and temperatures and stuff was like at stock without touching anything in this, then please go and watch that video first. But if you have already seen that or you just like to watch things out of order, then by all means continue watching. So to open it up, basically everything comes apart from the top. So there's this button back here on the back this one was not very easy to get off at first. So you push this button to make the top come off and it's one of those things where I had to push really hard on this button, harder than I thought I needed to, but then the more I took it on and off, the easier it got. So just give that button a nice firm push and you can see that popped up a little bit and then there's a little bit of a snap in the front that, uh, there we go. So it is attached right here. It's a little bit of a gap. There's the cable and it came right off just like that. Now the fan that's in here, we're pretty sure is actually a maglev fan. This one is a 2000 RPM fan. So obviously we're gonna be going for more so performance rather than acoustics. Um, this one was very, very silent at 1500 RPM. So this one allowing us to go a little bit higher should give us a little bit better performance, but both are PWM. Now you can use any fan you want in here. Like I'm probably gonna try a few different fans as we, as I kind of play around with this system moving forward. Um, I've got some Vardar 140s as the Furious Vardars. Heck, there's even a 3000 RPM Noctua fan just for lulls we might try out. So um, yeah, so we'll be taking that off. But in terms of opening up the sides, there are some things that you can change in this system to make it, uh, I don't know, a future a proof, up, upgradeability, whatever. Now in terms of opening up the sides, there's these four screws right here. So two per side, and then the sides basically just open up, basically like butterfly wings or something, I don't know. What. So when we open it up, you're gonna see both of the independent loops that are in there. This side right here being for the GPU, and this side right here being for the CPU. You can also see if you look, the GPU radiator is a little larger than the CPU rad. So this is the GPU right here though. This is uh, basically, I wanna say it's an NVIDIA reference card, but I'm not so positive anymore because this IO shield is not an NVIDIA IO shield. It could be a reference PCB, which I'm pretty convinced it is, but it's not an actual NVIDIA card because the IO shield is much different. But if you take a look at the way the cooler is on the GPU, we've got this fan that pushes down through a heat sink that's touching the VRMs. We've got our H100i style or even H150 Pro style pump on here, non-RGB. Actually, it looks like it might be RGB, but they have the lighting turned off. That's running to the radiator right here. This makes me feel like I could potentially put like a Titan RTX in here or something. But I'm concerned that the SFX um, 600 watt power supply from Corsair might not be up to the task. I'm also thinking about doing a mod to this case that Phil thought would be neat about stripping all the anodizing off and polishing all of the metal parts and making it just a big shiny, like almost like a monolithic, but polished monolithic deal. Um, but anyway, so the graphics card is separate from the CPU because it has that chamber divide. Plus it's just got a PCIe riser card, which is connecting it. And then all the wires are just running along the side right there. So nothing special on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and put this side back together before I screw it up. If we go ahead and look at the inside of our system now, you can see everything that is just crammed in here. So we have got right here 
is where our hard drive is. This is the two terabyte hard drive that I was mentioning that I would probably change out to an SSD. I'm considering taking this out and just putting in a one terabyte, maybe a two terabyte. I mean, that's, about, that's gonna be about a $300 upgrade to go with a two terabyte SSD. For now, I think the hard drive would probably be fine, but it's basically just a notebook drive. Now, if you wanna upgrade this, your first inclination or thought might be to undo those screws. Don't do that. There's two screws on the side right here that you undo. And when you do that, then that slides out as a whole tray. And then you can change out the drive pretty easily. Now there's not gonna be a lot of room on that, as you can see. So make sure once it comes out, you rotate it and then you can get to the SATA cable and the power cable. So this is the Corsair power supply. It's a 600 watt. And as you can see, it's a very standard size. It's not the extended SFX, basically. Just regular uh, modular cables that are twisted and tied up off to the side. You got a USB 3 right here. Um, so this power supply could be switched out to something like, say, my EVGA 650 GM if I wanted. So this is a higher wattage, higher everything power supply. And it basically retains that same form factor. So I could upgrade that. The cables, unfortunately, they don't use the same um, OEM. So the cables, I would have to change out all the cables in this. And trust me when I say they are routed and tied down in a very specific manner that would make this quite the job. So the motherboard's nothing proprietary either. This is a Z370, not a Z390. We talked about in our review, they kind of cheaped out on the motherboard and didn't go with the full chipset feature that you would want with the 9900K 9th Gen i9 CPU. Um, but uh, I'm not sure why they made that decision. But if you wanted to change this out, you could. Again, it's fully serviceable, nothing proprietary, nothing custom at all. In fact, I even took the box from my ROG Strix Z390i Gaming, which in my opinion, this is the motherboard they should have used in this. The concern though is the ITX layout is very complicated where things go and not all manufacturers tend to use the same logic in that. What you would have to make sure in a chassis like this if you want to upgrade it is Where's the USB 3.0 gonna land? Where are the power plugs gonna land? Because the routing in this chassis is very specific. This was the better board. This is the one Corsair should have used. Um, can't imagine there being enough of a cost difference at $3,600 for this thing, for this not to have made sense. There's still profit in there. So a little bit of a tangent there, but um, I digress at all. I guess they have their reasons. Maybe they'll make a revision change in the future. In terms of RAM, this is Corsair DDR4 2666 LPX. It's low profile memory. You do have enough height technically to go with higher profile RAM if you wanted to, like something RGB or whatever. It won't hardly show anyway. But I think the reason why they did this is once you fold these tubes down, they sort of occupy that space on top of the RAM. So I think if you go with tall RAM, then there won't be clearance for the tubes, which is probably why they did that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna switch out this fan with the maglev fan. We're gonna overclock this a bit and see how much uh, of an improvement we get. So if you can't figure out how to upgrade the fan, then you probably shouldn't be upgrading anything in this system. It's literally these four screws. Make sure the orientation is, you know, pulling air out the top. So in terms of acoustics with the new fan, can you hear it? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's not, now there's fingerprints all over it. It's not the quietest system in the world. It's quieter than Skunk Works. It's quieter than the gold build I built because it's just one fan. All right, so the fan's set to default now, so it's gonna use the same logic and curve, which is just a percentage. So now because of, let's say 60% of 2000 is clearly higher than 60% of 1500, overall, we're gonna be moving more air through this with the exact same fan curve. All right, so we've been running now for uh, probably 20 minutes or so. We've, we're pretty much dancing back and forth right now between 56 and 57. That's where it's staying. Uh, you see our core speed is at 1755, 1740, bouncing back and forth. If we look at the IQ software, we're only at 1500 RPM. So now what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and see what the temperatures do if we put the fan curve at 100% and run the same test. I wanna see how much farther down those temperatures will come, which will kind of show us how far we can go on the overclock. Okay, so with the fan at 100%, which is only about 500 more RPM, all the factory clocks, we're dancing between 50 and 51. Earlier when we did this, we saw 49, but the ambient temp in the room has come up uh, two or three degrees Fahrenheit, so that makes sense for the, the difference there. So we're seeing about a six to seven C drop. That's why I want to put a 3000 RPM fan in here one day, because maybe we'll get it down into the 40s. Now with a custom loop, yeah, this would be down into the, the more mid 40s, no problem. But here's what we're gonna do. We are going to now overclock this and see how far we can actually get out of it. So with about another 20 minutes worth of uh, looping here and our overclock, th th we realize this is wrong. And we'll show you on MSI Afterburner uh, once we're done. 
this is, this is showing lower clocks than it's actually at. We pushed the memory over a, a, a thousand megahertz overclock, and we're gonna be running around 2050, maybe 2100 on the actual core, max temp at 53C with the fan at 100%. So we've obviously traded some acoustics because it's not completely silent, but with the hum of the air conditioner running in here, it, it kind of blends into the sound floor of the actual room environment, so it's really not intrusive. And our clock speed, oh no, it did actually stick right around 1985. It started at 2145, but came down from there. That's obviously because of the temperatures. But we're sitting just under 2000 megahertz um, in this small form factor. That's what makes this absolutely insane, is that you can get this level of overclock and these temperatures in this form factor. So we've been spending a while now trying to overclock the CPU and um, it's interesting, like no matter what we set the BIOS to on our turbo clock, like we have it set to five gigahertz right now, or 4.8 I mean, you can see it hits it for a second and then drops down to four five on all cores. We've changed the turbo mode, we've changed the logic, we've changed, we've put it to a fixed ratio, which it boots at 4.8. We've played with the AVX instruction offsets, all that sort of stuff, and we can't get it to stay at where we're telling it. We've even increased the theoretical power limit capability to a thousand watts, so it won't power draw limit. Unfortunately, this is in my opinion, having dealt with MSI motherboards, MSI has the second worst BIOS in the industry as far as I'm concerned, second only to Gigabyte being the worst. So I hate MSI's BIOS. That's why I think I'm gonna probably end up changing out this motherboard quite honestly to like the ASUS because it's better in every way as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so line load calibration is now set to mode three, which is adding a slight amount of voltage bump. Because we saw up here the VID is drooping slightly. Um, v core 1.248. So, I mean, 1.25 at 4.8 should be no problem whatsoever. So, let's see what the cores do. Four point, and right back down to 4.5 instantly. So, I have no idea why it's doing that. Um, if you know, put it in the comments below. I'll screw around with it. But again, this is why I absolutely positively hate. MSI's BIOS. Now, if we go over to Cinebench, Cinebench will just roast those CPUs. So if we run that, you can see the clocks stay at 4.8, 4.81, and our temps are sitting in the 60s and our hottest core hitting, what, 72. So obviously we have a lot of overclocking headroom. And if you remember our score previous to this was, uh, in the other video was a 1950, I think. And that just got us a 2070. And that's simply because they locked. In our previous test with all the factory bio settings, it was fluctuating the cores as it should. All right, so we're locked at five gigahertz. Let's see what happens. 2160. <laughs> All right, we'll try for five one. What the hell, what do we have to lose? Oh man. We're gonna call five gigahertz um, the feasible overclock on this, at least on this particular silicon. This could be a silicon dud too. It could have just lost. Lost the lottery. Okay, so some of you guys had asked in the review about upgradability and uh, why I didn't do a tear down and stuff. So yeah, there we go. I went ahead and tore it down, replaced the fan and check it out. Now we got that nifty uh, white LED going on in there, which we didn't have before. You guys can sound off on what mod you think I should do on this chassis. It'd be pretty simple. You just tear it all down, take the skins off the side, which are just screwed on there. And then you can strip the anodizing pretty easily with a chemical bath or uh, paint it pretty, pretty easily as well. So you guys tell me what you think I should do. Ultimately, I'm gonna make the choice myself though, because it's, it's my computer to look at. But um, that's what makes these little things fun, these little projects, because you can just kind of go balls to the wall with them. And uh, at the end of the day, it's whatever makes you happy. Speaking of what makes you happy, if you click like, you'd like, you'd be way happier today. I love the way you can just like, Dude, that was like a way uncorrectable error, man.